Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain Stephen Bondi at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of the long-standing Bahrain-U.S. strategic relations, noting the importance of further developing the bilateral partnership to meet joint aspirations that benefit both countries and their people. The latest regional and international developments and issues of common interest were also discussed during the meeting. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa. Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. The chairman of the board of trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed the trust to open its application process for high school graduates to register for the 10th intake of the trust scholarship program for the academic year 2023-2024 in early July 2023. During a meeting of the trust's board at Rafa Palace, His Highness Sheikh Isa highlighted that investing in education and training is an ongoing process that will shape a progressive future for all Bahrainis in line with the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Al Khalifa. His Highness noted the commitment of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to enriching the kingdom's educational sector through the introduction and adoption of a wide range of initiatives. His Highness emphasized that education remains a core pillar of the kingdom's national development priorities, outlining its essential role in achieving progress and development that benefits all. His Highness affirmed the determination of Bahrain citizens to pursue higher education and postgraduate studies, noting that learning remains a lifelong process for many. In this regard, His Highness emphasized the positive impact of learning on society as a whole, adding that success and achievement stem from a strong educational foundation. During the meeting, several topics from the agenda were discussed, including a review of quarterly reports, the new visual identity of the trust and developments in the trust investment project aimed at supporting its programs and enhancing its financial sustainability. Government hospitals organized a celebration on the occasion of the medical laboratories at Salmania Medical Complex obtaining a quality certificate. In the presence of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for the quality of the medical laboratories in the complex and the efficiency of the medical and technical staff in the laboratories. On the occasion, the CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Al Ansani, praised the support that the medical sector receives from His Majesty the King and the continuous follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on all that contributes to the development of the health services system in the kingdom. He also hailed the directives of the chairman of the Supreme Council of Health and his directives that contribute to obtaining this international certificate. He stressed that work on obtaining global accreditation, raising productivity and improving performance will continue. He stressed the importance of continuous improvement and development and keeping abreast of the latest technologies to ensure that performance conforms with the requirements of internationally recognized quality systems. The Minister of Interior and Head of the National Anti-Narcotics Committee, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa, attended a celebration to mark the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. A number of ministers, governors and senior officials attended. On the occasion, the Minister of Interior delivered the following speech. <laughs> كما هو معروف فقد أصدرت الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة قرار في عام 1987 حددت فيه بأن يكون السادس والعشرون من يونيو من كل عام باليوم العالمي لمكافحة المخدرات تقديرا منها للخطورة العالمية للتداعيات الناتجة من المخدرات وبحسب تقارير الأمم المتحدة لعام 2022 فهناك حوالي أكثر من 270 مليون شخص يستخدمون المخدرات أما بالنسبة إلى وضعنا في البحرين ولله الحمد فإن من خلال مراجعة البلاغات الخاصة بالمخدرات لم تكن هناك أي زيادة خلال الثلاث سنوات الماضية واستقر المعدل عند أقل من ثلاثة بالمئة نسبة إلى باقي البلاغات الجرمية وهذه تعتبر من أقل النسب ويسعدني هنا ولا شك أن أشكر الإدارة العامة للمباحث 
والأدلة الجنائية وأخص إدارة مكافحة المخدرات على جهودهم المخلصة والمستمرة لتأدية مسؤوليتهم الأمنية والشكر موصول إلى كل من ساهم معنا وتعاون معنا من وزارات ومؤسسات حتى على مستوى الفرد حضور الكرام حتى نتمكن من تحقيق المكافحة الناجحة والمؤثرة فإنه يجب علينا الاستمرار في مكافحة المخدرات على الحدود ومكافحتها في مدارسنا وفي مراكزنا الشبابية والأندية الرياضية ومكافحتها في بيوتنا ومكافحتها في الصحافة والفضاء الإلكتروني إننا في الواقع نكافح انتشار المخدرات بالعلم والقناعة والمسؤولية الأبوية والمسؤولية الوطنية إنها ولا شك ظاهرة أمنية عالمية خطيرة ومن الواجب علينا أن نتعاون جميعا لمكافحة ولا يخفى عليكم أيها الأفاضل فإننا نتعامل ونركز في ساحتنا الأمنية اليوم بالإضافة إلى مكافحة المخدرات على عدد من الظواهر والتحديات الأمنية مثل مكافحة الفساد إضافة إلى متابعة التجاوزات الإلكترونية وكذلك الأخلاقية إضافة إلى متابعة أي فوضى مرورية الحضور الكريم كما تلاحظون فإن القضايا الأمنية هي في الغالب قضايا تمس الأمن المجتمع ولذا فإنه من الواجب والمسؤولية الأمنية أن يقوم كل واحد منا بدوره في خدمة الأمن والنظام العام حتى نتمكن من تحقيق البيئة الآمنة الصالحة للحياة الكريمة في إطار القيم السمحة التي تورثناها لينعم الوطن بالرفاه والبركة في ظل قيادة قائد مسيرة الخير والكرامة وحافظ أمننا وسيادتنا سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Meanwhile, the Director General of Criminal Investigations and Forensic Science asserted in his speech the importance of the Interior Ministry's instructions, which contributed to achieving the task and missions of the General Directorate. He hailed the operations of the Anti-Narcotics Directorate and its role in the national efforts to protect society and youth, thanking the Chief of the Public Security for the follow-up of operations and security performance and expressing gratitude for the role of members of the National Anti-Drug Committee and the team assigned to follow up on the implementations of the panel's goals. The ceremony showcased a film on the committee's efforts and social society's role in fighting illicit drugs by countering supply and demand and awareness through the modern technology. The film highlighted the awareness programs that meet police anti-drug efforts. The event also included a brief on the national project to increase addiction recovery rates through artificial intelligence, the first of its kind in the Middle East. The project aimed to detect individuals more prone to relapse through various AI techniques to provide them with family and psychological support during rehabilitation. The project consists of two phases, treatment and recovery, and improving of fighting illicit drugs and border security. At the end of the ceremony, the Interior Minister honored individuals who cooperated with the Anti-Narcotics Directorate, wishing the attendees success in serving the nation.
The Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority held a meeting under the chairmanship of the Minister of Labor and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Authority, Jamil Ahmedan. During the meeting, Ahmedan expressed continued support for the efforts to develop the work environment in Bahrain to enhance the efficiency, productivity and stability of the labor market and preserve the rights of all work parties to serve the Economic Recovery Plan and the National Labor Market Plan in line with the government's program and the directions to enhance the country's economic and investment attractiveness. He stated that in International organizations are recognized the efforts made by the authority to maintain a highly productive and stable labor market. The board of directors noted Bahrain's achievements of the tier one status in the U.S. State Department's report on the classification of countries in the field of combating trafficking in persons for the sixth consecutive year. For her part, the CEO of the authority, Nov Jamshir, presented a detailed report highlighting the efforts and programs of the authority, the results achieved during the first quarter of this year, and the priority projects that are being implemented and completed during the current year. The Kingdom of Bahrain affirms its full commitment to cooperation in the field of human rights and supporting the principles of dialogue with the aim of promoting human rights and fundamental freedoms through its continuous international efforts in this field. Bahrain works to promote and implement the principles and standards of human rights in the various regional and international conventions it joined and adopts national legislations that are in line with the protection of human rights. These legislations were reflected in the Bahraini Human Rights File which excelled in protecting human rights and affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to continuous efforts in making human rights an important part of the national lifestyle. Bahrain joined many regional and international agreements to strengthen the democratic process that came as a result of the reform project of His Majesty the King, who drew an approach of respecting human rights and establishing a Bahraini strategy that contributes to strengthening the state of institutions and law. The National Plan for Human Rights also reflects the remarkable continuous efforts of Bahrain, where it set policies and programs to develop and enhance freedom for all citizens and residents to consolidate joint efforts to achieve sustainable progress for the country. Bahrain Hajj Mission held a coordination meeting presided over by its chairman Sheikh Adnan bin Abdullah Al-Ghattan at its premises in an Nasim district in the city of Mecca. Al-Ghattan praised the efforts of the mission's members and thanked them for their dedication and early preparation for this year, which will have a great impact on the services provided to pilgrims. The kingdom's mission handed over the sites and camps of Mina to Bahrain's Hajj campaigns in preparation for Hajj rituals. The engineering planning committee began to provide all basic services in Mina, where the pil Pilgrim's camps were fully furnished, in addition to installing 450 air conditioners on all tents to ensure a cool and suitable atmosphere. The Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah issued 1,800,000 electronic visas for Hajj this year in record time. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been employing digital technologies to receive Hajj requests for months and also employed these technologies to submit requests for domestic pilgrims early, about six months before the start of the season. For its part, the General Presidency for the Affairs of the Two Holy Mosques announced the readiness of the King Abdullah bin Abdelaziz Zamzam Water Distribution Center by supplying more than 2.2 million packages to keep up with the increasing demand and to provide them some water for all pilgrims. The Urban Planning and Development Authority has approved 11 new zoning maps. This is part of the authority's third phase of its project to update the ownership documents for approved zoning maps. The project is in line with its efforts to plan and replan lands in the kingdom to meet the requirements of the National Strategic Master Plan 2023. This is according to the procedures for applying the law of expropriation of the land for public benefit for the purposes of planning or replanning and in cooperation and coordination with the concerned authorities. The authority called on all real estate owners to take the necessary measures within 90 days to complete the procedures for updating their ownership documents.
International news, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi held an official session of talks with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at Hyderabad House in New Delhi. The two leaders discussed ways of further enhancing bilateral relations at all levels. They also reviewed regional and international developments of common interest. Memoranda of understanding and cooperation agreements were also signed on the fields of IT technology, cybersecurity, youth and sports, radio and culture. Al-Sisi arrived in India on a three-day trip for meetings with political and business leaders. He will also participate as the chief guest in celebrations of India's Republic Day. Saudi Aramco and Total Energies awarded engineering procurement and construction contracts for the 11 billion U.S. dollars Amiral Complex, a future world-scale petrochemicals facility expansion at the Sator refinery in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A signing ceremony took place in Dhahran, attended by Aramco's president and CEO Amin Nasr and Total Energies chairman and CEO Patrick Poyan, inter or integration with the existing Satorp refinery in Jubail. The new petrochemical complex will house the largest mixed uh, load steam cracker in the GCC with a capacity to produce 1.65 million tons of ethylene and other industrial gases annually. This expansion is expected to attract more than $4 billion in additional investment in a variety of industrial sectors and create about 7,000 jobs directly and indirectly in Saudi Arabia. The sectors that will benefit from the complex include carbon, fibers, lubricants, drilling, fluids, detergents, food additives, uh, vehicle parts, and tires.